So welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about fencing. Um, on our homestead here we have uh, some beef cattle that we've been running. Um, years ago when we started this we started with high tensile fence and we've used that for probably six eight years now and it's been okay. It hasn't been awesome. We just we got tired of trying to keep the electric fence working. Cattle chew through stuff, they break stuff, uh, GFIs trips, you know you hit wires when you're digging that kind of stuff it just it's a lot of maintenance so we decided to switch over to woven wire and when we were doing that um, we started learning about environmental verification and livestock um, sustainability those types of things through our local ag extension and one of the programs they have is called the nrcs it's the national resources conservation service i can never remember how that goes but that's what it is and what they do is essentially take uh people who have been farming for less than 10 years and they come out and they show you what kind of practices they'd be willing to help you do well and then if you commit to doing those practices well what they do is they uh put you into what's called a cost share program where if you're willing to put in fences uh the way they want you to do fences they'll help you out with the material cost that kind of a thing so we've done this, uh, all this fencing to the NRCS standard for woven wire, which is an eight foot post. We drive it 42 inches into the ground. It gets a 49 inch uh, section of woven wire. And then at the top of the post, it gets a single strand of barbed wire. And that is what we've done for our perimeter fence. So this, this particular field is about eight acres. We're doing one perimeter fence. And then in the middle on T-stakes, we're doing um, just barbed wire to, to break up our paddocks. Our cattle rotate through these paddocks and they graze on a rotational basis. So um, if we ever wanted to reseed or if we ever were not running cattle, we wanted to hay this, we can just pull our tea stakes and our barbed wire and we have basically one big eight, eight acre field that we can do whatever we wanted to. So we're gonna walk through uh, how we're building this, um, essentially what the standard is. It's not complicated, but if you're looking for a cheat sheet on how to do it, uh, hopefully this will help you. So everywhere your fence starts and stops, you're gonna have what we call an H brace. It looks like an H. Um, that's to allow you to pull tension into the fence. And these two posts are tied together with a crossbar and then a diagonal tensioner so that they can't tip. So that allows you to get a real good tight fence on it. Uh, the H braces are a six inch post and they have a four inch cross member. We're using high tensile wire with a, with a ratchet tensioner, just like you would in a high tensile system to pull tension in diagonally. Um, and then if you look over here, there's a, there's a 10 inch nail that goes through this post into this post and we leave the head just out so that this wire can't migrate down as you put tension on it. So this is a corner H brace. It's the exact same thing as a line H brace. It's just two of them and they're bent on the corner post. So one each direction lets you tension both directions off of your corner. If you have a, a line of fencing that's over 600 feet unbroken, you have to put an H brace in the middle of it so that you can tension uh, that long stretch. We do not have that anywhere because we've got gates breaking things up and corners breaking things up, so we didn't have to do any of that. But if you were running a very long fence, you'd have to put H braces uh, at least every 600 feet. One of the ways you can save money is instead of buying stuff, make stuff. Um, we needed a way to unroll these fence rolls. They weigh about 250 pounds a piece and they sell an unroller that does that. Um, but of course they cost a lot of money and what are you gonna do with it when you're done running a fence? So our solution was just to take a hunk of round pipe and weld the floor on it. And then we took a big three quarter inch bolt and welded it at the top and jammed a couple nuts to make a very rudimentary axle. And that's what we've been using to spool fence. And I don't think we spent any money on it. Uh, half a can of black paint and a five minute dig through the scrap pile. So as we unroll it, we kind of just lean it against the fence post so that we, it doesn't ever go flat on the ground and have to pick it up because it gets really ornery if you do that. So we lean it up as we go and then we come back through after we tension it and stand it up right. So when you get to a corner, we pull past the corner and then we can tension and, and fix it right here and then turn the corner and keep right on going without any splices. So we have an inline tensioner. We'll show you how to use that. And that lets us pull th this length, secure it, and then we turn the corner and we keep right on going. I'm gonna hand those to you.
So we got the tensioner hooked up. It's got a top pull and a bottom pull, so you can you can tension the top and bottom as necessary. Because as your as your land rises and falls, you're going to need to pull more tension into one or the other to get your fence tight the whole way around. So we have a come along on each one, and we're just going to start pulling tension into it until we get it how we want it, and then we'll go backwards and start stapling it in place. So you can see how much we've already pulled in this thing. We've pulled probably two feet out of this fence and we're not even done yet. So don't be afraid to pull on. This is all high tension fence. You can see how taut it already is. Um, and once we get it real tight, we'll go down there and start stapling it. And then we can pull uh, against those staples as we work our way down. So now we've got tension on this whole straight run. It's stapled off to both of our corner posts. And now we can turn and keep right on going down the same, down, down the 90 degree line. And it's the same exact system. When we get to the end of our run where the gate's at, we'll do the same exact thing we just did here. So basically we just use this post as a means of a splice. Where we ran out of fence, comes around this side of the post. We stapled it, folded it back on itself, restapled it. The new fence comes in on this side. We did the same thing. Now we can keep on tensioning. So this post, we put tension on it for a few minutes while we did this, but now we're gonna go ahead and pull to our age braces and actually put the permanent tension on the post and that should relieve the pressure on this post. So we're putting the single barbed wire on the top of it now. We're essentially doing it in stretches as the terrain dictates. So we've pulled out the whole length of this fence, but we're gonna tension from the top of this hill backwards so we don't have to fight the, the rise and fall of the land. Then we'll tension from here to the bottom of the hill in a stretch, then we'll tension to the corner in a stretch just so we're not fighting the, the ups and downs of the land. So now we got our, our woven wire ran installed, it's all stapled off. We got our barbed wire in just down from the top of the post and we're tensioning down the way towards the gate. We put tension in the whole thing and then we just walk along and we work it, just eyeball it at the top of the post and staple it off.